I recently took and passed the course for offset exploit development. In that course, you do a lot of assembly work and I found that having a calculator that has, you know, uh, hex, decimal, octal, octal, well not octal so much, but hex and decimal as a first class citizen, a calculator that does that, just super handy. Since then, um, or during that, I got, I also have a calculator problem, uh, but I have a couple of calculators I want to show you. So here's the venerable six HT, HP 16C, um, and it does have the, I don't know, the glare's too much. Ah, uh, there you go. The hexadecimal, octal, all built in. You can select the um, window size uh, right there. You can do and, not, all those kind of calculations, right? All from the calculator. This is the Casio CM100. It is also built for um, computer scientists, programmers, and it does the same. So if I do 41, uh, oh no, that's hex. If I do hex, well, 41 in hex is an A, right? Um, but you can check it out in, let's change the bit size uh, because that's, can you all see that? Yeah, you can see it mostly. Uh, you got it shining. Sorry, that's that's probably as best as I'm gonna get it. Anyway, uh, we can change the bit size. So we do shift and then like eight, have it be, and then we can go uh, check that out in binary, um, octal, and of course uh, decimal 65. Anyway, um, fell in love with calculators that have these items as first class citizens. Not, I don't have to dig through it. Um, of course I can open up Python and that's what I did a lot of it, but having a calculator is pretty awesome when it just has that feature. Well, I found a kit, um, this PX, 16C that is uh, basically this calculator, this 16C. These are expensive, um, but this is an electronics kit that you can build uh, yourself that has supposedly the exact same functionality. Um, that the HP one does. So I'm gonna put it together and I'll show it to you once I get it all built. Okay, so I've got pretty much everything done except for the display. It's gonna go right here and cover all of this, so I thought I'd show you. It The CPU is an AT Mega 328P. Um, you've got all the buttons, a couple of capacitors, resistors, the clock, um, battery speaker reset, programming headers, and that's it. Um, there's the back of the board. Uh, it does, so, the next shot I'll show is once I have this uh, put on and then we've got the, you know, the front and the back to put together. But I'll show you that. All right, there we go. So we got it all buttoned up. Um, I think I did this right. The instructions weren't super clear, but see, I have the header here, the short side on the display, and then the long side goes through the board. I think that's the way it's supposed to go. But let's uh, test it out. So, uh, let me get battery. It's uh, 2032 batteries. Uh, open. Where are these child proof? There we go. All right. So, I don't know which way it goes. It's got to go this side down. No, up. Because that's the positive. Oh, no. This side up. PR error. I don't know if you can see that, but 
I think that's a good thing. Um, let me tilt it, find something to tilt it like this. Here's part of the case. I'll use that. You can still see it, right? So if I do on, yeah. All right, so let's try. Um, here's the face plate. If I hold down um, times and hit on, yeah, it has the same functionality. So this should show all the display and it looks good. And then if I hold down the division and hit on, it should let me test all the buttons. Um, looks like, okay, yeah, it did work. So I'm gonna hit divide on, and then this is a button check. So I'm gonna hit all the buttons in order. And as long as they're registered by the CPU, I won't get an error. Looks good. Sweet. And uh, just to show you that it is working, if I hold divide on and I press, whoops, hold divide, hit on. If I hit any other button but that first one, you see we get an error. And that's how we, we would know that, you know, the buttons didn't work. At least one button didn't get registered because it recognized this button when it expected this button. Um, I don't know what reset does. Cool. Uh, let me put on the, uh, there's decimal. Uh, oh, binary is this one. Sweet. I need to set the time date. Um, everything else is looking good. Let me put the case together and I'll bring it back. All right, there we go, all finished. Um, so the top and the bottom plates are both aluminum um, with some kind of screen printing on them. Um, the, this middle part is 3D printer um, and it's not the best. I mean, you can definitely see the division lines. You've got, I got two of these battery holders that are also 3D printed. Um, and in the kit, I had one extra button and these four little dimple things to put on the bottom. I don't know how they're going to work because I have the screws there. Um, but, I mean, overall, I'm, I'm seriously impressed. I really, this was fun to put together. I don't know how I'm going to get that out. I pushed that in maybe a little far and maybe upside down. Uh-oh. Um, fun kit to put together. Uh, I really am happy now that I have kind of a, uh, one of these calculators I don't need to be so um, careful with. You know, I wouldn't take one of these tools to uh, my HP, my real HP 16C. But I don't really mind doing it to this one. So that's good. Anyway, um, ordered it off of eBay. It was something like $70 um, altogether. And yeah, if you're interested, check them out. Um, Alex Garza's, who I bought it from, I, of course, paid full price. You know, I didn't get anything free. Um, Really cool kit. Let me know what you think. Thanks, bye. So it looks like I did make one mistake. Um, I had the washers on this side at first and I think that was wrong. So um, under this aluminum is where I think the washers should go. What I think was happening was the aluminum plate here, this back plate was shorting out against some of the leads on the back side of the PCB. So once I switched the washers over, trimmed a, you know, a couple of the the um, leads on the back and now everything is working um so 
This is an RPN calculator. If you're not used to it, you enter in things a little bit different. So if I wanted to do like seven times six, I'm gonna do uh, seven, enter six times, and that gets me the answer. Um, yeah, and then we can clear it, we can delete it, and we can switch from float to hex. We can rotate. This is one, th rotate and shift are pretty cool. Um, so let me show you that real quick. Let's go to decimal. Um, we'll enter in 1365 um, and go to hex, no, to um, binary. We can see we get 01010101, right? So if I do shift left, which is this uh, A button here, or I gotta do function shift left. You can see we have ends in a zero. If I do it again, um, ends in a zero, but we have two zeros at the end. So this is shift left. Um, I don't have my word size set right here. Um, and I don't remember exactly how to do that. I think I do uh, eight function this button, no. Is it function this button eight? Maybe. Uh, let's try shift left now. Shift right. Function shift left. No. I'm um, gonna have to look up how to change the word size. It's it's this button, but function. No. If you hold down the function and this button or function, hold this button down, it'll show you the current status, and I don't remember exactly what those statuses are, um, but function word size, eight, eight, enter function word size. No, I don't, I don't remember the status is I think I have 56 character word size, maybe. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look up, read more on the uh, manual. Honestly, I, most of the time I'm doing binary to hex, hex to binary, um, and that's, I don't really get into a lot of the other functions, though I'd like to. Now that I have one that I'm not afraid to play with, um, I probably will. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.